Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to walk through how to dual boot Windows and Linux Mint. In this video, I'm using Windows 10. However, the steps are exactly the same for Windows 11 and even Windows 8. This video is also for people who have UEFI based systems. So let's go ahead and check that first. Search for system information and under BIOS mode, if you have UEFI, this is the video for you. If however you have legacy over here, I will link in the description a video which I made a few years ago. You can check that video out. With that being said, let's go ahead and look at our partition table. So right click on the windows icon and come to disk management. And over here, you can see that I have a hundred megabyte uh, EFI system partition. If you have this, it's good to go. We also have a C drive and D drive and also a recovery partition. Now, no matter how big this is, as long as you have an EFI system partition, you have GPT partitioning scheme on your system. Basically, anything that is modern has a UEFI BIOS boot mode and a GPT partitioning scheme. Now that we are also in our disk management system, let's go ahead and allocate some space where we'll be installing Linux. So I am going to be uh, allocating, unallocating space basically from the D drive, which has 300 megabytes. Now this is a fresh install of Windows, by the way. So I do not have any data in my D drive. Um, this process is not going to affect your data in your D drive. However, it's a good practice to always back up your data. With that being said, let's go ahead and shrink uh, D drive. So come uh, right click on uh, the D drive, come to shrink volume. And I'm going to unallocate a hundred gig. So one zero, two four zero zero don't worry what i did i'll let you know so once you do that we have 100 gigs of uh, space unallocated for our linux installation uh, what i did is basically multiplied uh, 100 with 1024 so let's say if you want to unallocate just 50 gigs you can go ahead and multiply 50 by 1024 and that is the value you want to put right there so now that we have space unallocated for our system let's go ahead uh, open our favorite web browser search for Linux Mint download this will lead you to this page uh, the current version of Linux Mint uh, at the point of recording this video is 21.2 uh, if you're watching this video in the future version 22 version 23 might be there but the steps for dual booting is going to be the same now on this page you see we have a bunch of additions we have cinnamon we have mate we have xfce we even have edge which is basically for the most modern hardware you can go ahead with any one of them However, if you are like new to Linux completely, I would recommend the cinnamon edition just because if you look at the screenshot, uh, you can see that how similar it is to Windows UI wise. So you can go ahead and click on download and this will lead you to this page over here. And there, what you see here are a bunch of mirrors. So if you live in any of these countries, US, Germany, etc., you can go ahead and click on the links that are closer to your country. The download speed is going to be really, really fast. However, if you live in Asia, for example, like I do, the worldwide mirror works best. So just go ahead and click on any of these links and you will have your ISO file downloaded and it should look something like this. Another thing you want to download is a disk burning utility. So I have Rufus over here. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Go ahead and download the latest version, which is 4.2 at the moment of recording this video. We can go ahead and close uh, stuff that we don't need. Uh, what we want to do right now is go ahead and install Rufus. So click on that, uh, just run. All right. It says, do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. And then do I want updates? No. And then we have Rufus. Now at this point, I want to insert a USB device, which should be of minimum eight GB space. Now you want to make sure that all the data that you have on this USB device should be backed up because that will be wiped off. So once you have that sorted, go ahead and plug it into your computer. I'm going to do that right now. And as you can see, Rufus is able to detect my USB device. So what you want to do is go ahead and click on select and this will open the place where you have your ISO file downloaded, double click on it and then make sure all just keep all of this as it is. Go ahead and click on start. Now, uh, this will give you this prompt right in ISO image mode. Uh, go ahead and click on OK. Uh, this needs internet connection to download a few files. So click on yes and click on yes again. Uh, and then now it wants you again that all data on your USB device will be wiped off. So you want to make sure you have already backed up data if there was any. Uh, once you have that sorted out, click on OK. And this is going to take some time. So sit back, relax and wait for this to finish. 
all right so now all you have to do is go ahead and restart your computer so click on restart the moment your laptop or motherboard manufacturers logo show up press one of the function keys shown on the screen that matches with them and you should get into your boot menu so for laptops these are the function keys for the said manufacturers and for desktop these are the set function keys for the manufacturer once you are in your boot menu you should see your usb device so in my case it's sandisk you should see something like uefi sandisk and you want to use your arrow keys to move up and down and then press enter when your usb device is highlighted once you do that you will see a menu like this which says start linux mint 21 uh, and you want to press enter and Linux Mint will start booting. All right, so Linux Mint has booted up. This is the Cinnamon desktop environment. Uh, and on the top left, we can see that there is an install Linux Mint option, which we will click on. And this will launch the installer. All right, so we have the Mint installer here with us. You want to select the language of installation that you want to proceed in and then click on continue. After that, you want to select your keyboard layout. So I am using the US keyboard layout. So this is fine for me. If you're using another keyboard layout, you can go ahead and uh, select that. You can also go ahead and test your keyboard layout. So it works in my case, click on continue. Once you're done with selecting your keyboard layout, you will get the option to install multimedia codecs, which I do uh, recommend to go ahead and check that option click on continue now all right so now we are presented with an option to do the installation uh, we have a couple of options here the first one is to install linux mint alongside windows boot manager um, this is pretty convenient except it does a few automated things which are not really desirable what we want to do is go ahead and click on something else we obviously don't want to erase our disk and completely wipe off windows so we'll click on something else and click on continue. Now this will give us our partition table and you have seen some of it in windows already. Um, as you can see over here, this is the 100 gigs uh, free, free space that we created that we unall unallocated uh, in the windows partition manager. So when we look over here, uh, first of all, I want to uh, tell you about the nomenclature. If you see slash dev uh, slash SDA, which means you are on a hard disk or a SATA SSD. If you see something like NVMe 0 and 1, it means that you are on an NVMe SSD. So that's the uh, nomenclature. Uh, since I'm on a hard disk, uh, you can see my Windows uh, EFI system partition. Then you also see my Windows uh, C drive and then my Windows D drive. All right. And then this is the free space that we created. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and select the device for bootloader installation to be my EFI system partition. So that is SDA one. All right. And then we can keep it as it is. Then now we want to come to the free space that we have created and then click on the plus symbol here. And we want to create our root partition. All right. So I'm going to allocate, let's say 20 gigs for the root. So 20 into 1024 is so 20480 that is 20 gigs i want to keep it as beginning of the space and the mount point is going to be root now click on ok and the installer will create this partition for you you will also be able to see it over here in this graph so the 20 gig partition has been created now i'm also going to create a swap partition uh, if you have let's say 16 gigs of more you don't really need to do this but the reason i'm showing it is just in case you have less than 8 gigs of ram uh swap basically acts like virtual memory so in case uh you run out of your physical memory uh this is going to take up some of the disk and utilize it as your virtual memory so uh for ram uh since on this machine i have 8 gigs of ram i'm going to click on plus uh and i'm going to allocate 8192 which is 8 gigs and then this is going to be end of space and then this is going to be a uh, swap area all right so this is going to create a virtual memory at the end of the disk uh, this should pop up at the end over here 
so as you can see swap has been created over here and the rest of the space that we have we are going to uh, create a partition known as the home partition this is where basically uh, all of your files will be so let's go ahead and create that first and then i'll explain what these partitions are so it's going to be a primary partition it's going to be at the beginning of the space it's going to be ext4 file system and the mount point is going to be home all right so click on ok and this will be created uh, right here in the space here all right so that's pretty much it i'll just quickly go through what we did here so we are going to be installing our linux bootloader in the same partition as the one where we have our windows bootloader so both of the bootloaders will reside in slash dev slash sda1 this is going to be our efi system partition we're not going to touch our windows c drive we're not going to touch our windows d drive however we are going to be creating on the free space that we created in windows a 20 gig root partition this is where all the linux file system will be uh, basically like your c drive in windows and then we are going to create a home drive home home partition where all your personal files will be your photos videos uh, documents etc and then we also created a swap partition for lower end systems uh, so this is 8 gigs uh, and this is your virtual memory so we are going to click go ahead and click on install now and then uh, it says do you want to write changes to disk and we say continue so now what you want to do is go ahead and select a time zone since i'm in india i'm going to go ahead and select india click on continue and then you want to set your name so i'm going to set my name and then you can set a password which is obviously important you can choose to log in automatically which i won't do that and i'll require my password to log in click on continue and now the Linux Mint installer will start installing Linux Mint on your computer. This is going to take some time, roughly from five to 10 minutes, depending on the speed of your disk and the speed of your computer in general. And that is pretty much it. We can go ahead and either continue testing Linux Mint or go ahead and restart now, which, what, which is what I'm going to do. And we will be prompted to remove our installation device. So you want to remove the USB device and go ahead and press enter. now we should boot into grub and as you can see we have two options we can boot into linux mint the first option and the third option is windows so let's go ahead and boot into linux mint so this is basically it guys this is how we dual boot windows and linux mint uh, once you boot into linux mint you can go ahead and do a few changes you can set up a few things and set up Linux Mint according to your needs. Uh, another thing that I would like to let you know is that through Linux Mint, you can also access your Windows uh, partitions. So this is your C drive and this is your D drive. All right. So this is basically how we dual boot Windows and Linux Mint. If you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel. Subscription really helps me out. And let me know in the comments which other videos would you like me to make. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.